In the previous parts of this symphony service course, we've been looking at how we can inject our dependencies into services, how we can change the scope of our services as well. And we've been playing a little bit around user validation. Now, in the future parts of this course, I want to be extending those a little bit further. I want to be looking at other parts of Symphony services as well. One thing I would like to do is validate other things, other entities, not just users, but perhaps products as well. Um, and what we're going to do in today's lesson is we're going to refactor what we've currently got. We're going to allow other entities to be validated. So we're going to be changing parts of the code. So let's jump straight into the code and start refactoring our stuff. So in the code here, we are in the uh, the default controller. What we're doing, let's just drag that out a little bit so you can see a little bit more. Uh, we are creating a standard class and that standard class is just got these magic uh, properties, first name, last name and password. We're then passing that into the user validation uh, service, the validate validation underscore user, uh, calling the isValid method here, passing in that standard class. Now, this is working fine, but it's not really uh, extendable because we are using standard classes here. Standard class doesn't really mean much. What we want to do is actually have different entities that represent different uh, objects that we can validate. At the moment, we're passing uh, the standard class into the is valid of the user validation service. If I was to just drag this out a little bit so you can see the user validator, uh, user validation, sorry, has this is valid passing in the user. That inter implements the validation interface, uh, which is here, and that is the is valid. Now it's only just, it's just passing in a variable. The variable doesn't have any kind of type around it. So it could be whatever it, it could be. So it could be an array for all we care about. What we want to do is tie that down a little bit more, enforce the fact that this must be a user, which means that when we have another entity, perhaps it could be a product entity, for instance, we can have its own sort of designated validator uh, interface for that specific product, perhaps. So what we need to do is change a couple of these things. Also, we need to change the validator interface itself, because again, that is just uh, simply just a variable without any kind of definition to that. So the first thing I'm going to do in here is create a new folder and that entity, we're just going to create a new file. We're going to call this user. Fantastic. So we have our user file here. I'm just going to uh, copy the namespace so I can adjust it up in, in, up into here. The namespace is going to be app bundle and then entity like so. And it's just going to have a class. It's just a very simple class. And that class is going to be called user. And if I went into the default controller and just copied these parts, into uh, the the entity here. Let's just bring it down here for reference. What we what we need is a private uh, la uh, first name. That's the first thing. First name, private uh, last name, private uh, password, like so. And let's just get rid of that because I was just using that as reference. Make that a little tidier now. In PHP Storm, that's the ID that I'm using. What you can do here is create some comments, define the type, uh, the data type of each one of these, which is just going to be string. Um, and then you can do a clever little thing in a minute that I'll just show you that will bring up, build or generate the, uh, the, the, the getters and setters instantly based off of your parameters here for your properties. And on a Mac, what you do is you press Command and then N. It brings up a little dialog, and you can choose getters and setters. Select the properties that you want. So we're going to select all of them. Also click on Fluent Setters and then press OK. That's automatically generated you all of the getters and setters you need to set and get each of these properties. Obviously, you could use a constructor and then do all that in the constructor as well, but I prefer it like this. Let's press save here. And then what I'm going to do in, where am I? In the default controller, 
we're going to, instead of instantiating a new standard class, we're going to instantiate a new user. And that is going to automatically put the, uh, the use case up here, which is fine. And then instead of doing this kind of stuff, we can do a set of, uh, of first name. We can do a set of last name. And of course, we can do a set of password. Passing in each of these and remove all of that stuff. That's fine like so. Now because we've defined the setters as fluent, we don't have to call this anymore. We can just simply do uh, that and remove uh, the, uh, the end tags here. Bring that out a little bit. So basically we're chaining all of this together which is pretty pretty handy. We can save that. Now that's going to obviously instantiate the new user, set all the bits and pieces. So you can imagine this is coming from, I don't know, perhaps a form or something and uh, we're then passing that in to the is valid. Now the problem with is valid is that is defined here. Like I've mentioned, that is just a variable. We want to enforce that this should be a user. So in the validation inter interface here, we can just do user, press enter, that's going to add the, uh, the, the use case like so. Now obviously that's going to break all of this. So if we go to user validation, uh, that needs to be a user now. Save that. That's now going to call the user validator and it's going to call validate passing in the user, which means that user validation needs to be a user. Again, that is defined by the validator interface, so let's do that one first. That needs to be a user. Then, of course, that's broken this stuff, so we need to adjust those. And this is the uh, the place where the actual validation happens. So instead of calling these magic uh, properties here, we can now do a get, and that was first name, get last name, like so. This is just making things a little bit more encapsulated because these are stored as private properties, the first name and last name and so forth. Um, also, we need to handle the admin too. So we can do uh, a user in, into that. And that's going to call the parent validate. And this here, we can do get password like so. Okay, so that's now sorted. We can now pass in a, a, a an instance of uh, the, the user. So in the default controller again, we're instantiating a new user and then we're, we're calling is valid passing in the user. That is then going to go off to call the validator, um, the user validator. And also, if it was an admin, we can call the admin validator. This is all handled um, in the, in the services.yml. I'll just quickly show you that. What we have here is the, the user and the admin. This is the, the thing that's doing all the legwork. And we're, we're injecting a dependency, which is user validator. I could change that to be admin, and it will treat this uh, user validation as uh, an admin. I've shown you that in the previous tutorial, so do check that out uh, if you want to take a look at what uh, what this all does. Let's scroll down now. Let's go down into the default controller again. We still have a problem here because with, uh, with this, we've now coupled the whole interface to be specific to a user. But what happens if we have another entity? What happens if we, say, have... Um, a product that we want to validate. Now, if we scroll down here, we have a validation interface that has to have a user. Well, if we had a, another way of validating something else, like, say, a product, or if we wanted to validate a book or something, that will probably have the uh, a, a function called is valid but what we've we've said is that is valid can only take a user so how are we going to handle this well first of all what i'm going to do is just create ourselves an entity first so let's just create a f uh, another file here we're just going to call this uh, product just going to copy uh, that from product here that's fine and then just op close that off call that product Product is going to have a product title, so we do private title. We're going to have a private uh, description as well, and perhaps we're going to have a private uh, price, maybe. I don't know. Something, something like that. Uh, just keeping it nice and simple. Again, what we're going to do is do a, uh, a string. This is a string. 
and uh, price should really be a float, I guess, um, because you know it could be it could be one pound ninety nine, one dollar ninety nine, or whatever. Let's now uh, generate those getters and setters. Make sure we have fluent setters on, and that is fine. So let's save that. Um, okay, in the default controller, we can now instantiate a new product. So let's do product is equal to, whoops, new product. And we're going to do product set title. And we're just going to call this foo. And we're going to do set description. And we're just going to call that bar. And we're going to do a price, so set price. And we're going to set that to 199, and that's good. Now, how do we go and validate this? Because we've gone and created a new entity here, but how do we validate it like we've done with the user? Well, here, what we've done is is we've gone to user validation, and we've called is, is valid, uh, like so. Whoops, let's just bring that back. So what I need to do is create myself another validation routine specifically for products. So in here, in the validator, I'm going to create a new, well, let's just copy that. So copy and then paste that into here. We're just going to call this product validation rather than user validation. So product validation, like so. And that is going to be product validation. It's going to implement the validator validation interface, but the is valid isn't going to be a product, isn't going to be a user, sorry. It is going to be a product. Now, this is going to fail uh, because it's not following the validation interface. That must be a user. We'll get onto this in just a second. Let's continue uh, down the road of creating ourselves a product validation routine. So this needs to be needs to be set to product validator. Uh, that is going to be a product validator now. Um, whoops, let's remove that. Um, and then that's also going to be a product validator. This is going to be a validation a validator interface. That's fine, uh, but it again it needs to uh, change to be a product, like so. And what we also need to do is create ourselves some validators. So let's just copy uh, that one here, and we're going to call this product. So this is the actual thing that is going to do the validation. Uh, it is going to be product validator. Um, remove all that. It's going to implement the validate, uh, validator interface, but instead of having a user here, whoops, have I gone and, uh, yeah, that needs to be a space. Uh, instead of being a user, it needs to be a product. That is the thing that we're validating. So we have a product. Uh, this needs to be... There we go, a product, and we're doing errors. We're going to have product uh, get title. We're going to check the title. Please add product title, like so. And here we're also going to have a product. We're going to check the get description. Please add uh, a product description, like so. And let's just ensure that uh, this is all wired up correctly. So we have product validation. It uses uh, uh, that. That needs to be product rather than user. Product, product. Like so. That's fine. Um, we also need to set the um, validation interface. Just double check that. Yeah. So that's still user. That is a problem. Uh, that is also still a user. That is also a problem. What we need to do is we need to change the default controller, call the service to validate the product. Um, obviously, we need to create our services first in terms of config. So scroll right up to the top. It's in config. It's in services. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to copy uh, this and we're just going to put that down here. This is going to be uh, validator product, product, 
if I could spell it, that would be fantastic. That's going to be a pro product validator. And again, we have that, which is going to be a validation of a product. And that is going to be a product validation. Now, later on in this course, I'm going to uh, show you how to make this a little bit more uh, sensible because at the moment it's not very dry. Uh, dry meaning don't repeat yourself. There's a lot of things that we're repeating here uh, that uh, in the future parts of this course I'll be showing you how to tidy up. So this takes a product validation and it requires the validator of product. So product which is fine. The problem is though with the validator user and validator product uh, they all implement uh, a similar service. So we have a service called validator interface and we have a validation interface. They, this validation interface has uh, a user in the is required. The validator interface also has a user uh, that is required. Now, how do you get around this when you're trying to use two types of, uh, of entities when you're trying to validate? Well, that's something that we're going to be focusing on uh, in just a second. What I'm going to do first, though, is just set this all up in the controller. So we have the user validation. That's fine. Um, we're going to do is user, oops, is user valid. We're going to copy that. Let's just drag this out so you can see it a little bit better. We're going to copy this because that's the user validation. We're also going to do uh, product validation now. So product validation. This is going to be validation of a product. Uh, and that is going to be product validation here. And we're passing in the product like so. And this obviously needs to change to be product. OK, so we've got the controller set up. We've got the user. We've got the product. We're validating each one in turn, but like I said, we've broken it because of these interfaces. We've coupled these interfaces to be those specific things. So how do we go about doing this? How do we go and inject those interfaces into the relevant uh, validation or validator service? This is something that we're going to be focusing on now. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is tackle the user validation. Now, the thing is, when you've got two entities that need to be validated and your validation classes are coupled to what it, what it is that you are validating, what you need to do is sort of think about it from another sort of abstract level. So, yes, you're validating a product. Yes, you're validating uh, a user. But actually, um, those things require common bits and pieces, so the is valid, but they also have, they require their own uh, ways of validating themselves. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to just, let's just uh, close that. We're going to create a new file and we're just going to call this user validation interface. Okay, so this is going to be the interface specifically for the user. We're also going to create a new file and we're going to call this a product validation interface like so. Let's just copy the validation interface over to these things. Okay, so obviously I need to change that uh, interface name to be a product validation interface, but here we can have a product like so and change that to be product. Remove that use case because we're not using uh, users anymore. And again, with the user validation interface, we can call that uh, user uh, validation interface, passing in a user, that is fine. Okay, so we now have basically duplicated ourselves. We have a product validation interface. We have a, a user validation interface. They might have other bits and pieces as well um, to validate their, their stuff. So, for example, a product validation interface might, may have other properties specifically for a product that perhaps the user validation uh, interface won't have. Um, but what we've done here is we've basically duplicated ourselves across the two, meaning that we can get rid of this um, this interface if we wanted to. The thing is, though, like I said, there's common things 
about a validation routine that we might want to use. So for example, regardless of what it is that we're validating, we might want to have a log of all the errors that were thrown. So instead of having is valid, perhaps we need to have get errors like so. And get errors is uh, just going to return an array. So we don't hatch actually need to couple this to any particular validation routine. Let's uh, press save on that. So now we have three different validation interfaces. The first one, uh, this one here, validation interface, just has a function that uh, gets the errors. The user validation interface has is valid but it has to be a user the product validation interface here uh, also has is valid but it has to be a product which means now we can change these and tailor these um, these, these concrete classes to specifically be what it is that we're after so instead of validation interface we're going to implement the uh, product validation interface and let's save that so that tidies that class up. And again, in the user validation, we're going to implement the user validation interface. Now, what are we going to do with the, the actual normal validation interface? This is the generic common interface. We have get errors. In the validators themselves, what we're doing when we're validating these things, we're just supplying these as errors and so forth. The validate is just returning these errors. But what I would like to do is have a way of uh, logging these, recording these in some sort of private uh, routine that all validator interfaces, all entities that are validated can access. So what we're going to do in the uh, the user validator here is we're also going to let's just drag this out so you can see a little bit better we're also going to do a comma and we're going to implement the usual validator whoops uh, interface that will also require the the use of a public function which is get whoops get errors like so and that is going to return uh, this user validator get errors. I know I haven't done this yet. I haven't actually put this in yet, but I'm, I'm, I will do so. Let's save that. That is going to, let's put in some comments here. That is going to return an array of errors, which means that the user validator needs to have uh, the, the get errors routine. Let's just uh, copy that save that, bring that out a little bit so you can uh, access the other files. So let's focus on the user validator for now. That needs to have, uh, bring that out a little bit, that needs to have get errors. So public function get errors like so. Uh, and that is just going to return the errors. So this errors, which means that we need to have a private errors array. And for every time this uh, we have an error here, we can do this, this errors, and then add that up to that, like so. And that's just going to return this errors. So we don't need that anymore. So we're going to do a similar thing for the product. Uh, uh, validation as well. So we're just going to copy that into product validator. Uh, that is going to uh, implement the uh, sorry the, the an, another interface for specifically for products, which I'll handle in just a second. Um, and this here is going to do this. This errors. like so. We don't need that. That's fine. Okay, so we don't need that either. Okay, so that um, that requires a, a product which is broken because of the validator interface here. That I'm just going to uh, uh, deal. I'll deal with that in just a second. We also need admin. Admin, I think, yeah, extends that. So we can now do this 
because it extends it, what we need to do is set that to be uh, pro uh, protected so we can have access to that in the scope. So as uh, admin validator, we can now do this. This errors is equal to that, as well as this errors, we add that on. In fact, we don't need to do that anymore. We just need to validate the routine because we're storing the errors. And then again, we just return that. That's fine. So let's fix the product validator. This is broken because we're passing in a product and not a user in the validator interface. The validator interface has a user here. Let's just um, walk our way back, though, and see what we've done with uh, the validation routine. We're going to do a similar thing here, uh, but for the validators. The validation routines, um, they are user and they are product, and we've split them up by having um, different types of interfaces. So the user has a user validation interface. It also has a validation interface. Uh, there is something wrong here. It must be declared uh, abstract or implement uh, validate. Oh, I've gone and uh, modeled that up, haven't I? So that needs to be, sorry, that needs to be a validation uh, interface, I believe. There we go. Yeah, so that's fixed. So let's just drag that out. So we now have the user validation interface and the validation interface. Uh, user validation is more geared towards users. Validation interface is just the generic interface that all validation classes uh, should adopt which is a similar pattern to, to what we're going to do with this up here, the validators. So we're going to create a new file and we're just going to have uh, user uh, validator. Interface is going to be very similar to this. However, uh, it is just going to have, so that's, we'll call that user interface, uh, but that's going to um, supply the user we're also going to uh, have a product interface. I'm just going to copy that uh, into here. So let's just uh, paste that in. We call this product validator interface. Change this, obviously, because this is now a product thing. And that takes a product instead of a user. So we can remove that. So it's, it's again, it's very similar to this pattern in the sense that we now we have uh, another two interfaces, and those two interfaces are geared specifically towards uh, what it is that they're actually validating. Now, the, the actual validator interface itself needs to have um, get errors because this is the, uh, the, the thing that is going to return the errors, so we don't need that up here, um, of all of the other concrete classes. So here we've got user validator has get errors, uh, which is this errors up here, which is fine. And user validator also implements the user validator interface, like so. And also the product validator also implements the product validator interface. And one of the points that I want to make in this tutorial is that when you start uh, finding yourself being too tightly coupled to certain things, what you what you should be doing is creating yourself other classes that allow for uh, places to store perhaps generic um, abstract kind of methods. For example, the get errors uh, method belongs to both the user and the 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 product uh, validators. And validations and so forth, uh, but the the way in which we validate needs to be specific to what it is that we're validating. That's why we have the product validator interface that has the validate function, which requires a product. I better put that in as product. Sorry, um, and we have the user validator interface that also has a validate and that requires a user. Let me just double check that is, uh, yeah, that validate product, that's fine. So going back to our controller now, what we've done as a recap, uh, we've created two entities. One is a, a user, one is a product, and these are in the, uh, the entity folders here. They're simply just collections of bits and pieces. So we have title, description, and price for product. We have first name, last name, password for the user. Okay, back into the controller. What we've done is we've called the user validation uh, service 
to uh, check whether the user is valid. And very similar to that, we've also called the product validation uh, service to check whether the product is valid. But the problem we had was the interfaces were very coupled to those kind of entities, right? So it was very tightly coupled to the user entity, which meant that we couldn't validate the product entity uh, very well. So what I ended up doing was creating two extra uh, interfaces for the validation and two extra interfaces for the validators. And then what you can do is change what implements what. So, for example, with the product validation, we implement the product validation interface. For the uh, user validation, we we implement the user validation interface. And I've just realized, of course, that uh, the product validation also needs to implement the uh, validation interface. That also needs to return uh, get errors like so. And that is going to do this product validator and its get errors, like so. And we can access get errors here because it is uh, a, a validator interface. Okay, so this could be a user, this could be whatever, but as long as it ad adheres to the validator interface, uh, we have get errors because get errors is defined in, in here, which also means that in the default controller, uh, I can do if one of these was invalid, so for example, if I was to remove uh, this, for instance, so if that was just an empty string, and also remove the first name here, we can do save, because if we went to the browser, refresh the page, we can now see that they're both invalid. So is user valid is false, is product valid is false. But we don't actually know what what is wrong here, but we can ha access those because we now have those uh, the get errors. So if I, I went back into the tutorial, uh, we can now do uh, user validation is uh, valid. And uh, let's just set that to be, be false. So if is valid is false, then what we can do is a for each of um, user validation get errors as error and then we can print that out so we can do um, HTML like so and concat that to be the error and because it's uh, HTML we can do a BR um, obviously I need to pass in the user as well like so. So let's refresh the page, see what happens. And as we can see, we now have the output, please add first name. Now, the reason why this is coming out twice is because we're validating it twice. Is if I went back into the tutorial, uh, we're calling is valid, passing in the user here, that does the validation. But also we're, we're doing it here, so is valid, like so. What we could do is tidy this up a little bit more so instead of just saying user valid and so forth doing a JSON encoding of that we can do is valid or is user valid passing in that like so and then we can do a JSON encode of that variable which is fine uh, and then we don't need to validate that again that's fine we then just run through this. So if I was to save that, uh, refresh the page, it should now only validate it once. Hopefully, let's go back to the browser here. Refresh the page. Yeah. Okay, so w we've got this problem here. Please add the first name, which is fine, because if I went back into uh, PHP Storm again, into the tutorial, let's change that to uh, my name again and remove... Uh, the last name, press save, go back into the browser and uh, refresh the page. Uh, we can see that it's now changed to please add the last name. Let's now just ch make sure that this is still running for the product. So go back into the tutorial. Let's do a similar thing here. So where we've got the is valid of the product. Let's just bring that out so make a little bit more room. Let's copy that, put that in as is product valid. like so, 
and then that is going to be the JSON encoding of that so that's going to get the string representation of the boolean which is fine and let's just copy that as well it's not very dry I know but uh, just for this purpose it's going to be fine let's put that in and then that is obviously the product validation uh, of get errors so let's save that scroll up to the top here let's put that back in to be uh, my surname and then on the set title we've already removed that that's fine so let's save that so now we should have an error with the product rather than an error with the user so let's go back into the browser refresh the page and now we can see that the user in this case is valid but the product is invalid so we've got the uh, please add product title uh, written here so that's great we've got different types of ways that we can validate things because we've got different entities that we're validating both the product and the user and we're using very similar ways of retrieving these things from uh, the controller so is valid and get errors we're passing we're bubbling up the errors from uh, the the validators so the validators will be uh, saving the errors or logging the errors into their own little arrays of errors um, and then that bubbles up through to uh, to here so we have a, a get errors thing here and then that will use the validator get errors and return that and that's how we access that from the controller now something I want to point out here is if we scroll up to the top to the services there is an awful lot of services that we're starting to add we've got 24 lines of ser or services or or 7 to 24 here there are ways that we can we can change this and make this a little bit more dry, uh, make it a little bit more um, user friendly. Perhaps there is going to be uh, another thing, another entity that we want to supply. A point that I want to make here is that by decoupling our classes, we're also uh, increasing the amount of configuration that we are supplying because there's there's all of this stuff and we might want to be implementing uh, logging routines into these sort of validation bits and pieces as well so you might want to log whenever someone creates an invalid request that's something that we're going to be looking at later on but that would mean that we would have to inject a, a logging service into both of these validation routines and you're going to end up duplicating yourself. This is something that we're going to be focusing on in future tutorials, how we can uh, change the configuration to be a little bit more um, extendable and flow a little bit better, read a little bit better, because, you know, you put in another five services and it's going to get quite beefy quite weighty so that is what we're going to be focusing on in future tutorials now I know I appreciate this has been a bit of a long tutorial but I've covered a lot of ground and I've uh, sort of laid the foundations for future tutorials as well if you found this tutorial helpful then do give it a thumbs up show your appreciation if you've got any comments or queries about today's tutorial or any tutorials within this series do let me know put them in the comments section below do subscribe to pick up the future symphony services tutorials as well as well as all the the web chats and discussions that i do throughout the week thanks ever so much happy coding everyone and i'll see you again next time cheers bye